And a warm welcome to the latest edition of Goodwin Live on Instagram Live. Um, we're getting these every Monday and Wednesday at 7pm. Today we are on and it's, it is a Thursday. Unfortunately the problem that we had yesterday was that the uh, office, our main office was broken into for a third time and twice yesterday. And so we had to uh, go down there and sort things out with the police and the forensics and everything like that. So apologies yesterday for... Uh, not being on, but we are going. To, we are on today, and we've got a very, very exciting and interesting lineup. And I will, as usual, go back to front. We're joined at seven thirty by current Southern Area Super Welterweight Champion Dean Richardson, who's going to tell us what he's been up to uh, during lockdown, and we're going to talk about his career when boxing resumes. Prior to Dean Richardson, we have William Weber. In my opinion, one of the most exciting talents in British boxing today uh, at super middleweight. He's a man that is going to be winning many, many titles down the line. Before, Le before William Webber, we've got Liam Shinquin, former Southern Area champion who's got his eyes on the prize of at least an English title in his comeback. He had quite a while out of the ring, but then came back. So we're looking forward to speaking to Liam. And first of all, we've got a very interesting man, Moses Matuvu. Now Moses was, I believe, one of the country's most most uh, exciting journeyman to watch he fought on many many good win shows uh and he he was a real top man he was always reliable he was very very rarely stopped and he was a very very exciting uh, man to watch uh, now moses has been out of the ring for quite a while so it'd be interesting to find out what he's done after boxing and what he's up to now so we're going to try and track with moses so let me try and get hold of moses see if he's he's on uh, I haven't seen Moses for five years. I couldn't believe it when I was last. Moses, how are you? Hello, how are you? I'm good. Do you know, so, I didn't realise it's four and a half years since you last had a fight. Ain't that crazy? I know, it's Unbelievable. What, are, what, are you doing, what have you done since you retired from boxing? Uh, you know what? I, uh, I haven't done much. You know, I've been catching up with uh, being a home family. You know, I mean, uh, when I was doing the boxing... Obviously, it was taking me away a lot from the family. Uh, I used to do a lot of training. Obviously, to keep my core strength uh, up to uh, being able to uh, be entertaining as I was in the ring, like you saw, uh, to keep up with the young ones. But it kept me a lot out of the house. So I've been catching up on uh, family life. And are you still living in Belfast? I am still living in Banga, yes, which is outside Belfast. In Banga, yeah, just outside Belfast. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing now work-wise? Are you still working at the stores or...? Do you know what? Yes, I, I was lucky enough to get my job back at the supermarket. In these crazy times, I had to. I was uh, starting myself up as a PT in one of the local gyms. Uh, they were lucky enough to uh, take me on and show me how things are done and maybe take a few uh, boxing classes. Um, I still uh, help out a little bit with Alio a few days a week. Okay. You remember our Alio? I'm sure uh, he still has a few fighters from some of your shows. But I was uh, trying to start out as a PT, and uh, Corona happened. I had to take my job back at the uh, supermarket. You know. And what, what's it like there? Are they being very, is it very safe there for you to work there? You know what? It is. Uh, I, I went back on. Uh, Stores are closed at night. You know, they have to close up at 10 p.m. and open up again at 8 a.m. Uh, it's busy as, you know, every day it's, it's busy as. Because everybody being home obviously needs their food shopping and all that. Yeah, we do. And what, going back and looking over your career, which did, well, you had 60, you're still looking now, 73 fights in total. Yes. What, what was the fight or the night that you enjoyed the most? You know, um, it's hard to beat the, uh, I, and I'm not just saying this because of your show, but then again, it wasn't really, I don't think you were doing the promotion of the show. The prize fighter for the heavyweights, the first yeah. time they did it. You know, I got to catch up with a lot, a lot of big men in the boxing world, uh, you know, heavyweights. And that, the atmosphere there was a little bit even uh, more exciting than usual at your home. Your home was always, uh, you know, it's always exciting anyway. But that night, you know, uh, everybody was there. And I think Anthony Joshua did, did fight. 
uh, yeah. to top the bill. Yeah. yeah, that was a very exciting fight, uh, exciting night, because I uh, got got to meet a lot of people, got to meet a lot of people, and they flew in a few legends too. Yeah, for that show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you finished, and I know you finished because of the medical situation, mm. um, did you really miss it? Did it take you a long time to adjust afterwards? Oh, did it ever? Yes, yes. It was so hard. But, you know, I had to come to reality with the fact that I had been so lucky and I had been able to go on uh, much longer than a lot of people my age would have been able to. Uh, you know, boxing gave me so much, you know. Um, but I had had a good run. I had really had a good run, you know, thanks to you and uh, mostly uh, the promoters around uh, uh, the UK uh, in Alio, reviving that part of my career because, you know, it was much, much later in life for me. Because when you look at the other journeymen, they're a lot younger. Yeah. Uh, and I was just able to use some of the skills. I was always limited anyway. It's really sad to say that. I was always limited. That's why I always took the uh, journeyman route to be able to fight fighters were a little bit younger in the game in with their experience um but when it when when it finished you know it's taken me a little bit of time and i had to stay out of the gym so i wouldn't get the buzz of what everybody's getting now and thinking about coming back to the ring because i couldn't uh the whole thing was getting it out of my system but now that i'm done i'm ready to help a few other fighters but also uh maybe help out people get in shape you know yeah, no, well, that's good. So, I mean, I always remember the funny thing about you, you always used to celebrate winning, even if you lost, and you put your hands up as if you won, which was, you are always good fun to watch, and that's one thing that you did, you provided a lot of entertainment. But what was the worst part of being a boxer? Oh, the worst part of being a boxer is uh, keeping a certain kind of weight. You know, uh, the discipline of that is... You know, I mean, I don't think anybody can come out and say, oh, that is really exciting to, you know, the anxiety of going on the scale and knowing you might actually be, you know, three pounds over and you just have to lose it within a certain period of time. The, uh, you know, because it comes from your dieting, your, uh, your exercising, to, to try to be able to stay within a certain kind of weight is... And I think, I think that's uh, going to be a main theme of me doing my uh, personal training. Because yeah. a lot of people, it's, it's a hard thing staying within a certain weight. And you're like, Ugh. getting on that scale and not being that weight, I think, is, you know, maybe the only people that get, get away with it are heavyweights. Because every once yeah. in a while, you know, you don't really look at how, you know, how heavy the heavyweight is. But every other weight, that's a big, big challenge. I always remember talking about weights. So you stepped in once and fought one of our heavyweights, David Abraham, who was about nearly Ooh. seven foot. Do you remember Ooh. that? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You know, I used to size them up and look at them, and I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, Al used to, to laugh at me. And, you know, I was uh, brave enough to be like, oh, well, they are in their beginning stages. You know, I would just dance all around them, and Al had to hold me back. You know, I don't want to, like, you know, just... Uh, you know, name, uh, name drop people. But uh, I think uh, in the beginning, the Dillian White fight was open. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was there like, no, Moses, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> yeah. but, I mean, this, I, mean I, I saw many fights on various people's shows that I yeah. thought if you'd try, if you'd really wanted to, you could have won. Do you know what? But there, is, there was also the element of uh, the business side of things. And I don't want to sound like you know, we, we are out there as gentlemen for and fight. But there is an element that I have an opportunity to fight every week. And it's where you are. Uh, you know, you, you are in boxing. You understand this very well. Like, if I stepped within maybe a couple steps of throwing the punch that I needed to throw, you, that's what you're talking about, I would be able to maybe be more effective but i was also thinking you know i could have a, a fight every two weeks here and if i get myself because the, the, most of the people i was fighting that you're talking about were much younger than me so it wasn't me being in position to overpower them they could very easily overpower me you know punch for punch so you know 
I mean, it was very calculated on my part, trying to get back and you know into the ring another two weeks. And I'm like, mm, maybe I better lay off. Maybe I better lay off. You know, and <laughs> you know, you, you get yourself another fight, another couple of weeks. You know, true. No. Mm -hmm. Well, Moses, it's really great to look see you looking so well and so happy because you you're one of the great guys of boxing, and I'm glad you, that you're well and your family's still in touch and you're still in in Northern Ireland. So. Thank you so much for joining us. Keep in touch, and I hope to see you in some form of capacity at boxing soon, you know, because you're, you're a big loss to the sport. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and reaching up in these times and shaking up on me. Yeah. Take care, Moses. You look after yourself, and I'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. That, Bye for now. Yes. That was Moses Matubu, one of the boxing's great guys and somebody that has made the sport tick over for so many years bringing lots of entertainment, lots of fun and, sp and spirit to the, to the shows. And uh, he's still interested in boxing and helping out young fighters coming through, which is uh, great. So as soon as Moses logs off, we'll uh, go on to Liam Shinkwin, who's on next. Now, Liam Shinkwin he has a story as well. Former, former champion, took a long break from the ring, um, and he made a comeback recently and was on the verge of an English title eliminator and was actually due to be boxing on the 16th of May. Um, but that was scuppered with the with the virus. So I'm going to see now whether we can track down Liam. He's got a good story or two, that's for sure. So let's uh, let's track down Liam. Here he is. Let's go, Liam. How are you? Hello, Steve. How are you doing? Oh, good. What are you up to? You should have been fighting, shouldn't you? This oh, month. No, I was getting. Yeah. But what date was it? The thirtieth of May. Sixteenth. Was it sixteenth or third? Third. Thirtieth. We were going to gonna go for yeah what can we do that's uh that's life isn't it um but you know i'm still training been training every day keep still myself keep safe. so you know as soon as i get an opportunity yeah you know, so, just gotta stay in shape yeah 100 percent. i mean the, the the thing is it i had an interview with boxing social today and there could be the opportunity of some big fights coming up if fighters yeah. are in shape if it's the right fight of course yeah yeah of course. um because they're not because the, the plan from what i understand is if they get it off the ground, is that the bigger promoters are going to do weekly shows, but they won't be able to use okay. foreign fighters. So, yep. again, yep. you're not going to go in a fight you can't win or the wrong weight without the preparation, but there are going to be opportunities for those that yeah. stay in shape. And well, as, as I said to you, I, I only want 50 50 fights. I'm getting old now. You know, I'm 35 <laughs> this year. I don't, I don't want no. You know, are you 30? You're not, you're not looking bad for 35. Yeah. I mean, I'll find 35. It. I've been pro 12 years, I've had yeah, 11 just... fights in 12 years. <laughs> I mean, I mean, was your high, was your highlight of your career beating Ryan Taylor at uh, probably yeah, beating Ryan Taylor, yeah, at, at Wembley. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that is definitely the highlight. I think, and yeah, and it was partly my downfall because I think that was, that was my first fight with Gary Logan, and obviously I won it, and it, that was I think I got it too soon because that was my first fight with him, and I felt like that was my world title once I'd won that because no one really, I don't think many people expected me to win either. Yeah, so. That was my world title, and I felt after that I'd sort of, you know, I just lost a bit of motivation, and then I got the call for prize fighter at quite late notice. Yeah. Well, I say late notice, notice. It was five weeks notice, but I, my hands were still really bad from the um, Ryan Taylor fight, and so we we got the call for prize fighter. We went in the gym and tried my hands out, and they felt okay, but that was only five weeks um, notice, but it just wasn't enough time to get really fight fit. Yeah, don't get me wrong, I was fit, but I just weren't. I weren't fight fit, and you know, there's a difference between being fit and and obviously fight fit. Because you you only had one more fight after that before you really on, on up, your show, you? yeah, in Watford, yeah, yeah, and that was it, and that was it and, for you. Wasn't and even it? then, I just I, I just didn't didn't have my mojo. That's why I decided, you know what, it's not, you know, boxing is not the sort of sport you can play at. Um, and I thought, you know what, just I honestly didn't think I'd be fighting again. And it was six years out, wasn't it? Between six years then out, and the yeah. next fight. Six yep. years. Six years, yeah, long time. But you came back and you looked good in your your first fight, didn't you? I mean, you... Yeah, it was okay. You know what? I think I went straight back in with a six rounder, didn't I, against yeah. Ibra Ibra Rios, Rios. Who's a who's tough. He's as tough as they come, yeah. And I, I remember my first two fights with him, my hands killed me after. Um, he's got the hardest head I've ever hit. Uh, but yeah, funnily enough, this time, Tony done my hands well because they didn't, didn't hurt one little bit. And um, yeah, it's good. But even then, like I think going straight back into a six six freeze was was tough because although I was fit, I think mentally going into rounds like the last round, I felt I was Antonio, so I felt like my legs are like jelly. 
obviously they weren't, but it was just obviously Ooh. six years out of the ring and going straight back into a six rounder was, I suppose, always going to be tough just mentally. But the hat, and you also fought Jamie Spate after that, but you, your hands have held up in both fights, haven't oh, you? Oh, my hands have been fine, yeah, yeah. I think I'd like the way um, Tony does them. Yeah, Tony, good, you, I mean, I think that's a, good, in the past. that's a good, that's been a very good teamwork because Tony Peel's a very good up and coming trainer. So yeah, that is brilliant. Yeah, and he's building a good. I met up with Tony. He's building a good team, good stable. He's a good man. So you know, hopefully he'll have many champions, and you'll be the first with any luck. Yeah, hopefully. Team. Hopefully. Well, you and Tom, there'll be a battle between the two of you. Yeah, right? I know. You know what? It's perfect because we've got a few boys all around the same weight. So you know, that's what you want. That's how you you know spur each other on in the gym. And uh, yeah. yeah, we've got a perfect little stable of fighters around, like ten stone, eleven stone. You can keep going. So, what are you? What have you been doing apart from training since you've been since you've been off? We've all been off. <laughs> Not really, to be honest. Just training, looking after my little boy. I have him pretty much half the week. Um, and yeah, like I've been because I'm a personal trainer. I've decided to put on. Um, I've been doing like live Instagram right. workouts every day at twelve o'clock. Um, and so I've been doing them since so we started lockdown. But I noticed I was doing them every day. I was doing them six days a week. And I noticed after um, a month of doing it, I was starting to put on weight just from doing things like push-ups every day. Because, yeah, I was starting to put on muscle. So I'd sort of cut down to three days a week. Because um, I've i always floated around at about 70 kilos. And now I'm like weighing about 72, 73. So, yeah, yeah, it's coming down. But I'm in, I'm in, I'm in good shape. What do you? Feel, how do you feel? How do you feel as a PT that your PTing is going to be affected by this whole virus situation? Uh, you know, I've I've been I've been a little bit lucky because I've got a few client, a lot of clients in London who they've got gyms at their houses, so I've I've been training them via FaceTime. Oh, okay. Which is handy, yeah. So I've still had a bit of work. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've I've lost them. Um, I haven't been as busy as usual, but no. yeah, I've been lucky that I've had them to who are still wanting to train. So. So what, do you, so what do you? So boxing wise, what do you want yep. out of the second career of Liam Shinquin? I'll just, you know, what I'm taking it seriously now, Steve. I didn't. I played at the game before. You know, I've had what's it? As I said, twelve years, and I've had eleven fights. You know, I've been in and out, in and out, and you know, I'm just when you're not training hard properly, when you're not taking it seriously, and you are cutting corners, you don't enjoy it. And when you are you know, giving it your all, you enjoy it. And I'm enjoying boxing at the moment. Well, I'm enjoying training at the moment, not really doing so much boxing, but, mm. you know, I'm looking forward to getting back in there and fighting, you know. Yeah. The, di uh, the difficulty the difficulty is going to be if you take what they've done in Ireland. They said that professional sport can resume in July, but they said that gyms can't open until August. Now, that's mad. I lost you a little bit there, Steve. So I just said that in Ireland, so in Ireland, they said yep. that professional boxing and combat sports can resume in July, but gyms can't open until August. How on earth can you have professional <laughs> combat sport when no gyms open? That's a proper Irish way to go about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm Irish. Bad, right? anyway. but, yeah. but, and, that, and that's what we'll find out this week. Hopefully we'll find a bit more out on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see yeah. how we go. But Liam, yeah. let's hope, and what do, you, what do you actually want to achieve? What do you want to achieve? What level do you think you can get to this time? You know, since I've been a little boy, I've always looked at the Lonsdale belt and thought, you know what, I want that. And yeah, that's still a goal of mine. I'd still love to win a Lonsdale belt. And, and who anything? knows? I mean, if you, when you can win a Lonsdale belt, who knows? You know, it's, there's fine, it's a fine margin between, like I say, being a British champion and being a world champion. It's just, you know, sticking with it. And Any, listen, anything, anything is, poss anything is possible. Anything is possible. You know, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Just got to keep going. Well, thanks cool. a lot for joining us, Liam. Nice Glad to see you keeping Good fit man. and looking well. So, you um, too. You too. We'll, we'll catch base with you soon. See you thanks soon. a lot. Thanks nice a lot, Liam. Steve. All the best. Cheers, mate. Bye bye. Cheers, mate. Take bye -bye. care. Bye -bye. And that's Liam Shinkwin, a former, former champion, uh, Southern Area champion, fought at Wembley Arena. Um, to somebody who hasn't won a title yet, but he's obviously hoping to win some titles um, down the line. So, we're just going to wait for. Liam to log off. For Liam to go. That was uh, Liam Shinquin, a man that has 
won a title. And now we're going to be talking to somebody that is yet to win a title, but it, there is no doubt that he is going to win a title and he's one of the most exciting talents in the country. But let's have a chat with William Webber. Let's find him. <sighs> Here he is. Wait for him to join us. Will, how you doing? Steve, how you doing, Steve? You're all right. What have you been up to? Oh, just training, staying indoors, keep training. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, yes. so I mean, you've, I mean, you had a bit of a setback, didn't we? Um, with a couple of medical issues, like a lot of people are having with with the board. You know, they're being very cautious at the moment, but yeah. we're, we're ready to go again. And then we're struck down by the, uh, by the virus, which is it must yeah. be frustrating. It, yeah, it was very, it was sort of in the week building up to it, it was like, you know, we kept checking the news and it was like, is it going to happen, isn't it going to happen, and it was, oh yeah, it was very frustrating, because I mean, I, I felt so good for that, for that fight, coming up to that, I was really ready for it, you know, obviously I had, um, had like injury on the fight before, and then obviously going into that one, I was so ready to get in there and really do the business, and then it got cancelled because of that, and oh, I mean, no. you know, can't be helped, but yeah, it's real, real pain in the ass. And on the back of the injury as well, that's just un just unbelievable, just unbelievable. Yeah. Bad. Like the only, the fortunate thing is you're a very young man, and yeah. your time is going to come, isn't it? So yeah, I've got time. So, mind, yeah. Yeah. So for people that don't know you, you started off fighting on matchroom shows, didn't you? And then yeah. there was, uh, let's just say, somebody who was in charge of matching made an absolute er serious error of judgment and didn't know what they were doing. Yeah. I messed it up for you at a young age. Um, but since you've been on board with us, things, and to me, you keep improving and improving with every fight. Would you say mm. that's fair? Oh, yeah, without a doubt, yeah. Definitely without a doubt, yeah. I mean, you, you guys do a... All of you, you do a fantastic job at everything. The whole putting the show together, the matchmaking, everything's it's brilliant, all of it, yeah. And, and, and tell us about who trains you and how, who, where your training team, or how you train to your fights. Uh, so I've got... Um, this is... I'm actually in the gym at the moment. Um, that I've got here at my house. Um, my dad does all like my strength and conditioning and fitness stuff, and then I go over to Stevens to see my coach Paul Day. Mm -hmm. who, um, he was twelve or thirteen fights undefeated as a professional, and he was trained by Jimmy Tibbs. So mm -hmm. he's. Um, I mean, I know everyone loves their own coach, but to me, when I train with him, he's um, he's got the most um, te his technical ability and just no. All about boxing is absolutely superb. I, I can't fault it really. So I, I feel like I've, I'm in. You know, my team is brilliant, really. And you've been un and you under you basically you're undefeated under your new team. You haven't looked. You know, you've looked sensational at times, and mm. and and there's been a massive change in your career, and I think for the better. And uh, mm. I mean, but going going forward, I mean, obviously you're a young man with a lot of dreams. Yeah. What what are they? What what do you realistically think you can achieve? Well. As far as I can go, <laughs> you know, I take each step at a time and keep going on to bigger and better things. I mean, you know, I personally, I find that, yeah, if I was to win, I want to win the Southern area, but then after I've won that, I'm looking straight to the English. Mm -hmm. After I've won that straight, you know, I want to, I want to progress and I want to, I want to go as far as I can go. I mean, I know everyone has a dream of, you know, being a world champion, but why not? I'm, I'm going to give it a go and give it my best shot. And what about your amateur? Tell us about your amateur career. Well, it's my amateur career. I had about, um, oh, well, I was for most of my amateur career, I was at Hoddesdon. Um, and then the later part of my amateur career, I moved to Stevenage and was training with Paul um, and my dad, same as an amateur. Um, I had about four mid 40s like 45 fights or something and i'd won about 38 39 of those mm. i think i'd stopped about 23 24 of them so it was i was it was pretty successful as an amateur career i won the nationals once and i won the harringay once as well so yeah i've been i'd, I'd, I'd been about and yeah <laughs> had a good amateur career yeah. and that's the thing because you it's, it's just that obviously no matter how good your amateur career is you need that proper building in a pro because it is a different sport. And you, and, the, oh, yeah. and, and it was, uh, you know, and again, you, it was rushed a bit at the start. But, I mean, realistically, in your mind, I know we haven't really spoken about this, but when do you think you're going to be ready for a Southern Area title shot? Well, I'd like, I mean, you know, I, 
I put obviously complete trust in you, Kevin, the whole the whole team in like guiding me on my journey. You know, I put complete trust in you guys. But I would like to, in possibly my next fight, step up to six rounds, mm-hmm. see how we go in that, and just keep moving from there. Next next couple of years, next two or three years, maybe. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Def- yeah, definitely. maybe not as long. Maybe not as long as that. I think. Well, yeah, I would, yeah, yeah. I'd like to definitely. You know, I mean, like I say, I, I put complete trust in you guys and what you do. You're all, you obviously know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I feel like I'm I'm getting ready. I'm growing with every fight. Every fight that goes on, I feel like I'm getting better and growing, and everything seems to be coming together now. So it's going really well. I mean, I've got I've got aspirations of you far beyond southern areas. So, but it's important that, <laughs> but it's important that it's important that when we win that, we're ready to move on. That's the key um, because it's once you start that ball rolling, then you've got to sort of yeah. continue that ball. And I mean, it's like southern area now; they, they've got a really good champion in Jermaine Brown, and you know that wouldn't he's he's above average for southern area champion. And half of it is when you step up to southern area, you you don't want to be going against an English title level fighter because yeah, cool. yeah. and that's the key yeah. but so you know i think it's that's also very important that we gauge mm. we gauge the right time and the right place to go timing's key in this business isn't it so of course that's really, yeah of course and that's really great so what do you so the, for the rest of it are you sort of you're locked down at home and hopefully and the good thing you've got is when other people can't go to their gyms your gym's at home so you've, yeah. you've got a big advantage haven't you that is a bonus yeah i mean i do my runs and come out here and train and bag work and pads and stuff and my dad's always getting me to do whatever strength conditioning stuff he's got. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've just been, yeah, staying at home. I've been helping. I've been done a few bits in the garden and tidied up the garden a bit. A few sort of odd jobs here and there. But yeah, just mainly staying at home and training and doing the best in the situation we've been given, you know? Exactly, you can't do it. But for those, yeah. for those people that don't know you who are watching this and tomorrow watch this on both Boxing Social or whatever platform they're going to watch it on, they need to take a note of your name because they are looking at a future big star of boxing. So thank, <laughs> thanks a lot, Will, for joining us. I've got total yeah. faith in you, you know that. Um, but uh, I don't mind saying that because I believe it's true. So thanks a lot for joining us tonight, right. Will. Thank you for having me on. Yes. Stay safe, look after yourself, all the best to your family. And we'll touch away soon. Cheers, see you yeah. later. Okay. Cheers, matey. Right. So that's from one potential champion who will be a future champion. We've spoken to a former champion in Liam Shinquin. Now we're going to touch base with a current champion. So we've got a mixture of everything on tonight's show. And this is a young man um, from West London, Mr. Dean Richardson. So we're going to get hold of Mr. Dean Richardson now. Here we go. Current Southern Area Super Welterweight Champion and a man. Dean, how you doing? Hello there, Steve. You good, mate? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, what have you been up to? You've been out, you've been out in the cabs or there's been no work? No, nah, it's not been worth it, mate. Just, um, one, the money just isn't there. There's just no one about. And two, like, the people that you do get in the cab, like, you don't know if they've been isolating properly or nothing. So then, obviously, you have to clean the cab and then you put yourself at risk of more of catching it then. So I haven't bothered, if I'm honest, mate. I think when did I fight on the 14th? I went to work yeah. on the 16th. I think I put 30 quid diesel in and got £25 for the day. So I was like, nah, I ain't going to bother. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. I bet you feel lucky that you got that fight in before it stopped, don't you? Now, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It's helped me out massively. Like when, when like the few days before, when it was a bit touch and go, whether it was gonna go ahead, I was thinking to myself, it probably shouldn't really. But I'd agree. Yeah. I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I got a fight in before. Well, after everyone else, I suppose. Don't know when the next one's gonna be. No, it's going to be, it, 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 I can't, I, I genuinely, I've said that, I, I'll say it again, I can't see it till next year, I can't see, No. Uh, I cannot see it, I can, I can see this behind closed door stuff, and I do see you getting, I do see you getting a phone call to be an opponent at fairly short notice in, in the yeah. wrong type of fight, I see that coming, because they'll want to pick you off at a time when you're not spot on and it's not the right fight. Yeah. I spoke to Linus about this the other day, and like Linus said, he's not going to be derailed from, from the plan that he's got just because he's desperate to fight. He'll just wait. Um, yeah, exactly. That, that, that's the key, isn't it? We don't, want to, we don't want to blow it all and take the wrong fight at the wrong time just because you haven't got a fight on. I think that's the key. But there, there'll be a lot of boxers, you, you mark my words, picked off 
during these some if this happens, and you'll see a lot of boxers that were going places all end their careers. Um, yeah. I think I think you know, and I think in and if you listen, if you're if you're in your thirties and you're coming to the end of your career, you take the chance, I think. But if you're a young man, there's going to be a lot better, you know, better yeah, opportunities. Yeah, something like Joe Joyce, line. this ain't done him no good, has it? Like, he, he, he was late turning over. Joe Joyce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because he's quite old, didn't he, to turn over. So this ain't done him done him no favours. No, so, anybody, they've got, they've got to go in now. Still, so. I mean, I've got Kay Possible, obviously, super lightweight. He's, he's been making rapid progress under Xavier Miller. He'd be one that would be prime to keep fit and take take his chance in one of these big fights and yeah. but it's not but there's not that wouldn't make sense for everybody do you know what I mean it's difficult yeah. so how's so how's lockdown been where are you living and what I'm at my girlfriend because after the um after the fight I, I spent quite a lot of time here and then it was literally the what is it the week after I think the Friday after we went into lockdown and um I just sort of thought like I've been here I haven't I didn't stay at my mum's or or my dad's so I thought, oh, just in case I am carrying something and I don't know. Like, my mum's parents are pretty reliant on her. Um, so I didn't want to give her nothing or, or my dad nothing. So, yeah, just, I'm just isolating at my, my girlfriend's with her and her mum. Still like her? Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's good. To be fair, it's been easy. It's been easy. Everyone's getting, it's everyone's it's... just being forced to get along, aren't they, really? Not like we're being forced to get along, but... If you're stuck with people, you got you're gonna want to get it's along. Plenty, there's not some. I, I had a call from one of my financial clients, Dean, who'd been married 25 odd years. And yeah. They rang me up after three weeks into lockdown, and they said, "Steve, we've got to tell you something." I said, "What's that?" He said, "We don't really spend that much time together, and we've been spending the last three weeks together. We've decided we don't like each other. We're getting divorced. Seriously." And so now I've got to deal with both of them because they've actually, for the first time in their lives, not had a choice but to really talk to each other consistently. And I think if you're a divorce lawyer, you will make a lot of money from this uh, this little lockdown. That's a bit awkward. because I should have waited until after lockdown because you can't go anywhere now, can you? No, he's gone. He left. Oh, oh, so he's not even isolated. <laughs> he's gone. He went halfway through the lockdown. Oh, that's yeah. mad. So you're doing, you're doing well if you still like, if you still like each other because it's, it's not, a, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of adjustment this, isn't it, for everybody, I think. Yeah, we nearly fell out when she cut my hair. But apart from that, <laughs> so what have you been doing? Have you have you been have you been eating yourself silly, or you've been keeping yourself fairly fit, or what have you been doing? No, I've, I've, well, I've got access to a gym. It's not a boxing gym, but uh, it's a gym. So I've been been going in there um, at least like every other day since I've got access to it. It's it's quite nice to do a bit of training, not like solely concentrating on boxing it's quite nice to do like a few other things like be a bit like fluid with with what i can do so that's been nice as well been going for like long walks a day so i'm half enjoying it mate if i tell you no, <laughs> no i'm looking forward to getting back to a proper training but it's, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's nice to train um have a bit of um choice with what we want to do so, so yeah so what do you what, what do you want out what do you want out of your career going forward Ugh, enough money so I can stop driving a cab. So, so it's the ultimate goal is the money in the big no, I'd, like, I'd like to obviously get to the level where I can box full time, be be a full time athlete, and then I, th I think that's when you start really seeing even more difference and more improvements, yeah. and you really start achieving things. So, uh, yeah, like obviously the first first part of your career is hard, isn't it? Fighting journeymen, paying for them, and then you get into title level and you start earn a little bit more so I'm guessing yeah. the higher I go the, the better the money gets that's what I'm hoping that's your that's your that's the... getting that I don't think the bigger fighters will be getting well paid this year that's for sure I think the money's going to come down this year well is that so you I lost you then for the big for the bigger fights I think the money will come down because the bigger promoters will be able to afford to pay people a bit less <laughs> There won't yep. be the competition there, so I think it'll take a while to get back up to where it is now. Because um, we've no, you know, they'll be doing behind closed doors. They won't have gate revenue. There won't be the money there, so that's going to be the issue. It'll take a while to get back to normal, I think. Yeah, but I yeah. When you get something on Twitter about it, saying that they could do sort of cloak behind the doors fights in July, yeah. I'm thinking, but that's in July. You're going to need at least, at least, at the very least, six weeks sparring and training, but. Sparring, that's very sort of social distancing, is it? So, 
But Dean, it's mental because it's mental because I can't see it. You, because if you've got boxing in July and the gyms won't be open yet, what are you going to do? To open, get people to turn up fighting when they've had no yeah. sparring, no gym work. I mean, it's mental, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be like a year until it's all back and running properly. I think you'll get behind closed doors, but I don't think we're... I'm, again, you don't know what, they got, what they're up to, but I don't think, judging by what we can see, you can have behind closed doors until gyms are open for eight weeks. Yeah. I, don't, I, just don't, I don't, think it's, don't think it would be right to do that, but who knows in this mad world what people are going to do, but no, it seems to be their aiming for time. July. They're aiming, they're aiming for July, and we're on the 8th of May, and there's no, there's no gyms openings anytime soon, is there? So. No. I just think, what's the point in trying to rush it? Like, yeah, everyone wants to get back to normal, but if it's going to put people in danger, like, what's... You, you can't put anything over your health, really. So what's, what's the point in putting a lot of people's health at risk? By... Well, I totally agree. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't... There's no way I would allow any of my boxers to fight if they weren't having prop. no matter what they're paid, if they're not having preparation. I mean, you, it's just mental. It doesn't make any sense. And again, you know that some boxers will train behind closed doors in a gym and try and break the law. They'll break the rules. But they're not going to get sparring. There's not going to be adequate sparring out there because there's not no. enough people fighting to spar. So it just seems to be crazy. I would have. I, I think it would have been better if they'd said something like, "Let's aim for September," and then maybe the gyms could have. By that time, we could be sorted. But I think July just seems optimistic. But the border aiming for July as well. So they all seem to be doing it. So it yeah, doesn't I make any I sense to me. I agree with it. So. I don't we know. just have to see. We all want to see. We all want to see boxing, but we want to see it safely and uh, and and that every single boxer's got the proper preparation, don't we? That's what we want to see. Yeah, of course. Like boxing is a dangerous sport already. You don't want to make it even more dangerous. This time for the right. public as well. That coming to watch. You know what I mean? Yeah, be behind closed doors. I won't at first. That's oh, of course. Yeah, but yeah. even after yeah. that, like try, try, I don't know. That's what I mean. I think it's going to yeah. be at least a year until everything's back to normal. I think that's fair. I think it's fair. So, out of your boxing career, apart from money, do you have? I mean, do you have? A, do you have sort of? A, do you think a British title is realistic for you, minimum? Yeah, no, no. no. Obviously, the money helps getting into that position, but um, no, the, the British belt has always been something that I, I wanted to win. Um, like, it's, it's been a big, big goal of me, mine. Um, I'd like to win it outright as well. I remember Ricky Hatton saying one of his biggest regrets was not winning it outright, like, he went on to sort of, like, buy one kind of thing to keep it home, but to win it outright, I think that's a big, big goal of mine, and I think, I think I can achieve it, so. I mean, yeah, I mean, what, what did you, I mean, your last fight was tough, what did you learn from that Conrad Stinkowski fight? Um, there was a few things, like, <laughs> well, the thing is, like, with this fight, like, I didn't feel great the week before the fight, no sort of, like, symptoms of COVID, well, I know of, and then, I felt fine after like two days, but it just sort of like it just took a bit out, took a bit out of me, sort of leading up to it. And then everyone, because I think I was like the favourite going into it, everyone was saying to me, "Oh, you can't take him lightly. Um, like, don't be, don't fall off the ball." And I was thinking, "Nah, like I'm not." And in the changing room, I was, I was so relaxed. Like I, I was just so relaxed. I knew what I had to do. And then walk into the ring, I felt relaxed. And I don't really get nervous. The only time is when the trainers get out of the ring and you're waiting for the bell because <laughs> that's when you realise it's real, it's happening. And then I was stood there thinking, I, I don't even sort of feel, I don't even feel it now. So I sort of come out and then I thought, right, I've got to try and sort of like get my mind into it. Like, I, I, was, I felt relaxed and focused, but I thought, no, nah, I need to like G myself up. And I think I come out a bit too quick. And then I caught him with that left hand towards the end hurt him and then I threw I didn't throw calculator punches I just tried to think like right, oh I felt great all week if I can get a one round job like that would be perfect yeah. he survived it next round I catch him with a big left hand go put it on him again survived it and then right at the end I catch him with a left hand and I thought I had him out of there and then the bell went I thought oh for fuck's sake and then where was it again I think it was sort of after that, I just sort of stood there thinking, right, I've caught him with a few counter punches. All I have to do is land the counter and then get the finish. And then it, it, it just completely went off the game plan. And then Gary said, when did I put him down? I think the end of the sixth, I yeah, think it was. 
again, like, sort of towards the end, I was thinking, oh, fucking hell, like, <laughs> I'm knackered now. And then Gary <laughs> said to me, like, just, just please, like, get back to your boxing and throw lighter shots. And then I think I caught him with a, with a, with a lead hook that cut him. And yeah. I just thought, right, I'm just going to lightly put my hands together. Because I knew the referee was on the verge of stopping it because he was taking punishment. And yeah. His eye was swollen. So I just put my hands together sort of quite lightly and I started landing. <laughs> started yeah. landing the shots and the referee stepped in. So there was quite a lot of um, learning curves for me. Um, what to do in certain... Like, th th this fight, it will put me in good stead for the future. Like, I know exactly. how to react exactly. in different situations now. So, Because I think, I think the mistake a lot of fighters make, and necessarily they're not necessarily managed properly, is they jump from that to that. And, and yeah. you've got to go through this. I mean, the, the Nathan Graham fight was devastating, but apart from knowing that you can punch and knock somebody pretty much out, that we yeah. didn't learn anything, but it was a great fight. This fight is going to teach you a bit more. So next time, you're going to be able to adapt differently. It's about when you get to that level, being really ready for all eventualities, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's what makes sort of like the good fighters good. Yeah. They've, they've been there, they've experienced it, and they learn how to adapt. So, yeah. And tell us about your trainer, Gary Logan. I mean, you've formed a very good relationship with him, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Um, yeah, I come to him after uh, me and Barry split and to just explain my situation, where I was at. And yeah, he said, um, come down whenever it was and uh, go on the pads. And sh straight away, like, he, he just got like the clogs in, in my head, uh, clogs in the head really ticking over about how sort of like boxing works and how fighters break down other fighters and it's just every session just learning and just working we've, we've got the, t the tv next to the ring and we've constantly got fights on always watching uh, we might be halfway through the round on the pads and we've got the fight playing in the background and gary will clock something or i will and we'll be like quick rewind that and we'll go through it break down sort of why uh, the fight had done this, or why he done that, and how he set this up. So, it's, it's Gary really loves boxing, and it really comes across when when he's when he's training you. Yeah. So, it's, it's it's helped me get my love for boxing back to where it was. So, yeah, I'm over the to be. If somebody around. just if somebody just put a message on what's next for you, well, I don't think we know what's next for anybody, but obviously yeah. Dean's one that he's, he's defended the southern area. We'll be looking to move up to English level. Um, I think it's time now to have a look at the English title, but obviously we don't know how long that's going to be, whether we're going to need a fight back before we do it. Um, but that's the answer that you can't be, you can't plan anything at the moment other than know that we've got you in a very good position. I think that's a fair thing to say. Um, yeah. Moving on, it must also be quite inspirational having Dion Juma in the same camp as you as well. Yeah, Dion's brilliant. Like, I've known Dion since I was about 16, 17. I remember I walked into Dow Youth and... Uh, I was on the pads with Mickey and Mick said, see this guy, he's a double ABA champion. I said, oh, I want to do that. And Dion like, just smiled and like, spudded me. And I, I just got, on the, got, along, got on along with Dion really well for years. So then to get back in the same training camp as him, like, it's brilliant. Just, just watch him on the bag, seeing how he does this and does that. You just naturally pick things yeah. up from them, don't you? So... Him and as well, yeah. Sammy McNess as well, top level amateur. And you know, Sammy's brilliant as well. He, he's one of the most capable fighters I've ever sort of come across and seen. Like, really, really complete yeah. fighter. So, being around them two, just, you, just picking things up all the time. So, brilliant. Well, Dean, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Good to speak to you Cheers, again. We'll mate. keep in contact. But thanks a lot. It's been interesting. And look forward to your career next year when it gets back. So, it's going to be an exciting <laughs> ride ahead over the next couple of years, that's for sure. Ricky, it sounds Cheers, good, mate. Take care. Look after thanks yourself. Take care. Right. Cheers, mate. So thanks a lot, everybody. Now, we'll be back on Monday at 7 o'clock. So make sure you join us next Monday at 7 o'clock. Mondays and Wednesdays normally at 7 o'clock. We've got some very, very interesting guests next Monday, and it'll be out on their Instagram page. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next Monday.